Hi, and welcome back to another part of MediaSoup tutorial. Let us review what we accomplished in the previous video, where we basically created one producer and one consumer. So this will act as a producer and this will act as a consumer. We get local video, get RTP capabilities, create device, create send transport, connect send transport and produce. And on this side, we still need to get RTP capabilities and create the device, but then we just need to create receive transport and connect receive transport and consume. And the media stream should start flowing from the producer to the consumer. Let us now look at how we want our UI to look like and behave after we refactor our code from the previous video. We're just going to get rid of all the buttons and leave two buttons, publish and consume buttons. When we hit publish, we want the application to get user media video only for now and make all the necessary exchanges of parameters with the server and successfully stream the media. Let's see what happens when we publish. So now we assume that the media has started streaming. Let's go ahead and press consume. And when we click the consume button, we want the same to happen, but this time consume the media being streamed by the publisher. Let's do that. So the media is streaming from the publisher via the media sub server to the consumer. With this solution, we'll be able to make both the clients be a publisher and a consumer. Let's see what I mean. Let's refresh from both. I will publish from this side and I will consume from the other side. And then I'm going to switch the camera. Let's publish from this side and let's consume from the other side. So it seems to work. While this seems to work, the underlying code is not meant for it to work this way. It only works if you consume immediately after a publisher streams. If you first publish from both and then try to consume from both, you will notice that the last stream is the one being consumed. Let's try that. Let us refresh, publish from here. Let's change the camera, publish from this side. Now let's try to consume here. So you notice that it's consuming this media, but if we consume here, it will not consume that media. It will still be the last one that was being published. So the code in this video is not meant for multiple publishers and consumers. It is still meant for only one publisher and one consumer. We will fix this in the later video. Let us now go to our code from the previous video and start making changes to it. Okay, let's start with the HTML file. Let's scroll down and look for the consume button. I think this is the one that we need. I will copy it, go up, change this to publish. Change it to consume. We'll then remove all these buttons. Let's see how our UI looks like. Okay, so we have the two buttons. Let's now jump to index.js and make some changes to it. First things first, let's go and remove all the buttons that we don't need all the way to the bottom. Let's first start with get local media stream, scroll up. In the previous video, I used navigator.getUserMedia. This won't work in some browsers like Safari. Let's change that to navigator.mediadevices.getUserMedia. And then instead of using callbacks, let's use promises because getUserMedia returns a promise. Let's also remove async here. We don't need it. Now, because we are going to treat one client as a producer and the other as a consumer, let's declare a variable that will determine if this client is a producer or a consumer. And we default it to false, which basically means it is a consumer. And when it's true, this client is a producer. Now, if this client 
is a consumer, we need to know if there is already a producer on the server side. This way, we will know that we can go ahead and try and consume its media. So let's add a parameter that we expect to receive from the server upon a successful socket connection. Now, if you remember, our next step is to request media soup router RTP capabilities so that we can pass in the load method of the client's device object. Let's go ahead and create a method named goConnect that we should use for when we are connecting as a producer or a consumer and it takes in a parameter that determines if this connection is for a producer or a consumer. We set the value of producer or consumer to the isProducer variable and then we call our method getRTP capabilities. Let's scroll down to getRTP capabilities method. I'll change this to create room. Once we have the RTP capabilities, let's call the uh, create device. After we have created a device, the next step is to create a client side transport. But which transport? Send or receive transport. Now we have already set the variable is producer to a producer or consumer. If it is true, then we need to create send transport. Otherwise, we create a receive transport. Let's create a method that will help us determine the transport to create. Let's call it go create transport. After creating the send transport from the device, we need to call the produce method of the transport and that is in the connect send transport method. So let's go ahead and add the call in the create send transport method. And that's it for the producer from the client side. Okay, let us now jump to the server side code and let's start with the connection success where we return whether we have a producer or not. Now remember we had made a socket event call from the client side called create room. We don't have that yet. So let's go ahead and create the event. Let's move this up here. In the next video we will introduce rooms. So we are going to use this method for that. Let us now call a method get RTP capabilities and pass in the callback. We are going to create the method soon. So what we're basically doing is we raise an event from the client side to create a room. We check if there is a router already existing or not. If it doesn't exist, then we create a router. As we have seen before, a router represents a room. In this case, we have only one room. We are not going to deal with multiple rooms. In the next videos, we are going to deal with multiple rooms. For now, we just assume there's one room we create it if it does not exist already. And then we call the get RTP capabilities, pass in our callback. We return the RTP capabilities back to the client using the callback. We are now done with the code on the producer side. Let's go ahead and test our code and make sure we don't experience any errors or exceptions. Let's refresh. Everything is okay, no errors. Let's try and publish. Everything seems to be okay. There are no errors on the client side and no errors on the server side. So we're good. Let us now deal with the consumer code. Let's jump to index.js, scroll all the way down. Let's change the call to this button event. Let's call it go consume. And then we create this method. Let's scroll up and create our method. I'll put it right above the go connect. And from here, I'll call go connect and pass in false. 
Remember, we decide whether we are a producer or a consumer. In the previous code, we called GoConnect after we got the media stream. Oh, actually, I have not called GoConnect for the producer yet. So we will have to test again. That I will call it soon after receiving the media stream. And I will pass in true because that's a producer. So let's go and test again and make sure that there is no errors. So go refresh and publish. Okay, we now see that we are getting more consulted log printed out, which seems to be okay. There are no errors. Let's continue with uh, our consumer. So when we press the consume button, we need to call go connect and pass in false, indicating that we are a consumer and not a producer. Then we get the RTP capabilities. Now, because I'll start testing with one client being both the producer and consumer, I'm going to add a check if device object already exists. If it does, then I don't need to call get RTP capabilities because that indicates I have already made that call. Hence, device exists and I need to move on to create transport, be it send or receive. If it does not exist, then I need to first make that call to get RTP capabilities. So all I need to do is add a check. If device is undefined, then I need to get RTP capabilities. If device exists, then go and create transport. Now this being a consumer, it's going to call the create receive transport. And once the transport is created, we need to call the connect receive transport. So let's go ahead and add that. We'll add that here. And I think we are done. Let's go ahead and test. Let's refresh. Let's publish. Let's try to consume from the same browser. Okay, so it's working. Let's refresh again and try to consume from the other browser. Let's refresh, publish, consume from the other side. It's working. Now let's try to switch the producer and consumer using a different camera. Let's publish from this side. Okay, so far so good. Let's consume from this side. All right, so it's working. Thank you very much for being patient and watching this video. I hope to see you in the next video.